Michael Burks on the second down run, dances for yardage to his left. He gets enough to keep this drive alive. A first down for the home of Bucks as Burks is taken down at the 19, but more importantly, a reset of the down marker for Homa, and Blake Charles will stop the clock here with the, uh, actually there's a two minute warning. We'll be right back with the final two minutes. Can Homa hold on? We'll find out. It's a place to meet. It's a place for fun. It's the Homa Terrebonne Civic Center, a full service multi-purpose venue that serves South Louisiana with function space and entertainment. From Broadway to bull riding, football, to festivals, concerts, to conventions, and much more. There's something for everyone at South Louisiana's favorite show place. For more information or a list of coming attractions, call toll free 1-888-771-HTCC or visit homaciviccenter.com. Hey, that thing got a hammy? Yeah. Sweet. The all new Dodge Ram Heavy Duty. Did you mean the Charger? Because you know that's got a Hemi too. <laughs> now with a 345 horsepower, 5.7 liter Hemi Magnum. Hey! Ram Heavy Duty. Enough muscle to grab Motor Trend's 2003 Truck of the Year award. Welcome back, everyone. Along with Ronnie Rance, I'm Lynn Rollins. Two minutes separate the home of Bayou Bucks from their second upset victory of the Lake Charles Land Sharks in the last three weeks. That Kip Tejada right there, a little concerned, trying to figure out a way for his club to win this ball game. It's very simple. They've got to, you know, they've got to get a stop. They've got one timeout left. They've got to prevent the Bucks from running out the clock. I don't expect we'll see uh, balls through the air here. It'll be the Michael Burke show. Look for number 21 to get the ball with great regularity. He's knocked down behind the line of scrimmage. Darnell Lee, the six foot, 225 pound linebacker from McNeese, made a superb play. Darnell Lee, the middle linebacker, kind of came on a little run blitz and just when you blitz in the NIFL, you have to come through the A-gap, which is between the center and the guard. And Darnell Lee just kind of coming in there, trying to get to the tackler as quickly as possible and get him on the ground. If you have to blitz between the center and the guard, why would you not run outside to uh, automatically take a route away from the potential blitz? Well, that's true, but usually when you when you do run a ball outside, you have to have a toss to go with it, and I don't. I think you want to kind of be even extra cautious and not turn the ball over. Jack Phillips trying to rally the troops right there, the second-year head coach. A season ago, the Bucks missed the playoffs, had a sub-500 record, made some changes, brought a lot of key players back, especially Causey and Hurd and Herb Tyler, Burks. And there's some. The, uh, the Bayou Bucks expected uh, 2003 to be a much better season and to make a serious run at the playoffs. And a victory today will accomplish those goals and give them a chance to finish strong with uh, five more games to go after this one. It will also raise the eyebrows of the rest of the division, that's for sure. There's the toss. Burks giving ground, looking for a block, wanting to throw it and dumps it off. Well, that was certainly some sandlot razzle dazzle, wasn't it? Well, Jack Phillips probably telling Michael Burks, uh, don't do that again. You know, Herb Tyler kind of ran, it was a toss back, just, you know, so, so Burks could throw it. And Tyler kind of ran out there in the open and put his hand up. But a strange, strange call. Kip Tejada thought maybe a, a lineman was downfield, but did not get the call. So the Bucks are making it hard on themselves here with a minute 36. That stops the clock without uh, Lake Charles having to use a timeout. Now they've got a big fellow in the backfield behind Tyler. He's going to throw it. Looking. 
Flag goes down. Herb sails it to the end zone, well out of the reach of Herb, the intended receiver. And there is a penalty marker down. Hold against the Bucks, so that, that'll be declined by the Land Sharks. They put, they had the the uh, nose guard Roger Green in the backfield. The Bucks did as a protector. And that time, the Bucks could not get the job done offensively, and now going to have to kick on fourth down. And remember, they had a first down with two minutes to go in the ball game. They have used three plays that have taken only 33 seconds. 127 remains. Lake Charles still has life, trailing by seven. Strapolo kicks it, a low kick. Low kick. And it is knocked down. It takes a right turn, and once again, Anthony Porter jumps on it defensively up against the four boards. Wow. Homa just does not seem to be able to close out this Lake Charles team. They are struggling to close it out. No, no rush on the kick, just a bad low kick. The first order of business is to get it beyond the line of scrimmage. You see the loose ball and Hopefully for the Bucks, Anthony Porter was out of bounds. One twenty-two to go. There is life for the Sharks. Robinson fumbles a snap. It's on the carpet. It's recovered by Lake Charles. The clock continues to move. 70 seconds and counting. Second and 11. 103 to go. Robinson hit. Loose ball. Covered up in midfield by Major Griffin, the left guard. But the clock still is moving. 45 and on the march. It's Roger Green, or actually Andre Reed, who gets to the quarterback. Green's there as well. 30 seconds and counting. Third down at about 20. Robinson to the end zone. Broken up, incomplete, with 20.4 seconds remaining. Tyrone Hughes, number 30, back uh, defensively. For the Bucks, the former New Orleans Saints return specialist. He was back there to break up that pass by Robinson. So one final shot at the end zone, fourth and 25. The Land Sharks have to complete this ball in order to keep the game alive, really. Both teams offensively in the last two minutes have not been able to do anything on either side of the football. This ball has to be caught, or this play has to finish inside the eight-yard line. It's thrown short, and not much chance for Freddie Harrison to turn up field and keep anything going. Curious call or decision, really. Fourth down, and you don't throw it anywhere near the yard to make. seconds to win its third game in a row and its second in three weeks against Lake Charles. Land Sharks have fourth down. They've got to throw about a 20-yard pass just to get a, a first down and instead they throw about a five-yard out. Curious call. Kip the hat of the head coach for the Land Sharks. Furious. Some confusion there obviously between Jamie Shiver Jr. and the the quarterback, Ted Robinson. I'm not so sure, Ronnie, that they didn't think that the original line of scrimmage marker was uh, was perhaps the first down marker. Maybe so. There was definitely some confusion. You could see Jamie Shiva Jr. and Ted Robinson did not think it was fourth down. They, they thought they had maybe either made the first or it was third down even. Curious, funny ending here at Homer. 
But the Homa IU Bucks certainly are excited about the result. 28-21. And this Homa team has charged to the top of the Atlantic Division. We'll be right back to wrap it up following Homa's 28-21 win. beautiful for over 100 years. You work too hard to paint with anything less. Welcome back to the Homa Terrebonne Civic Center, where the Homa Bayou Bucks have knocked off the Lake Charles Land Sharks 28-21. Ronnie Rance is down on the carpet with a jubilant head coach, Jack Phillips. Ronnie? Thank you, Lynn. I'm down here with winning coach, Jack Phillips, and coach Three wins in a row for your club. You got to be excited. I am excited, and, and we still haven't reached our peak. Well, offensively, we struggle a little bit, but we did what it took to, to win the game, and that's what I'm excited about. Our guys are building character about themselves, about finishing ball games now. So I'm really excited about it. Three in a row. We lost three in a row, and then we come back to win three in a row. I'm really excited. Well, the Land Sharks obviously a very formidable opponent, and you guys have swept a series this year, which puts you right back in the thick of things to hopefully win a division championship. Absolutely, and I, I'm looking forward to that because now we're one half game back because we swept these guys, um, but we still got two or three tough opponents left, Beaumont and Austin. They're all playing pretty good darn football. So I'm just excited to be um, in the race. Last year this time, we were out of the race. Now we're in the race, so I'm just excited to be in, and I'm excited for the guys. They work really hard. Final question. Obviously, you can't say enough good things about your, your defensive front. I mean, uh, Green, Rod, you know, uh, Thomas and Reed were just unbelievable. Unbelievable. And the guys in the secondary are playing so many games with the guys. They're finally coming around in the secondary, which gives our defensive line an opportunity to sack the quarterback and vice versa. So they work really well together. I'm just, I'm so pleased. I, I'm, I'm outdone tonight. Congratulations. Uh, good luck the rest of the way. Thank you very much. All right, back to you, Lynn. Okay, Ronnie, thank you very much. Homa now five wins and three losses, but tied with five and two Lake Charles in the division. It was the third straight win for Homa as this defense held Lake Charles to five field goals and just one touchdown. Meanwhile, Herb Tyler hooked up with Kenny Causey a couple of times, and Michael Burks had a rushing touchdown early for the Homa team. The final score from Homa is... The Bayou Bucks winning it 28-21 over the Lake Charles Land Sharks. We hope you've enjoyed this action from the Homa Terrebonne Civic Center. It's National Indoor Football League play. For Ronnie Rance, I'm Lynn Rollins. We'll see you again next time. Good night, everybody.